Good morning, good morning, and very good morning. Welcome to the show. Welcome to Viewgraphy. All right, so we are having Nikon ZF. All right, as you can see. Uh, what we are going to do in the, this video is, uh, I just want to show you how to handle this machine because uh, this machine requires some really, you know, precise handling and uh, uh, the way we handle our normal mirrorless or DSLR, this camera need a little bit of more attention to details before you going to use it. So let's get started. And also in this video, I'm going to show you what each of these dials uh, basically uh, do, uh, each and every button, all of them. I'll try my best. All right, so let's get started. But before I uh, go, uh, before I, uh, I'm going to show you uh, what this camera is all about. Let me be very clear that this is only the handling part. I'm just going to show the handling. Uh, no dynamic range, high ISO capability, nothing. So this, this video is all about handling this camera. Okay, so first thing first, uh, this is a retro camera. So it means that most of the function are basically available through these dials, as you can see. But this camera is fully automated, just like normal mirrorless or DSLR that you have. That you have, okay. Uh, you have to put all. There are certain dials that you have to click, and then camera will automate uh, work automatically. What are those dials? I'm going to show you. So let's start first with the shutter. Oh, not before shutter. Power on. This is power on. So typical. Uh, power on button one and it has this screw so that you can screw up a little uh, that uh, cushion uh, to press in the shutter release button uh, which is uh, which you people used to have back in the days over the film camera this is movie record button and this is where your uh, aperture shows when you turn on the camera so if I turn on the camera you can you should have seen my notes showing f2 I believe yeah, I have to. So if I'm going to change, so you can see it's changing, I guess. It's hard to see, but yeah, yeah, you can see this information over here. Uh, let's talk about the uh, uh, shutter, oh. shutter dial. This is the shutter dial. You can see this shows one third step. So when you put the dial, when you press this, Center, uh, center lock button, rotate now you can dial the shutter speed by one full stop as you can see. But when you dial to this one third it locks. So now your camera will operate just like normal, uh, uh, normal uh, this bit. Okay, yeah, normal shutter speed as you can see. Oh, sorry, I was in aperture priority. So now in a manual mode. So now you can dial just like normal camera over here. And you can use this front command dial for dialing the aperture, as you can see over here, normal. So everything is fully automated. So what these dials are for? So if I'm going to move this dial to X, so this will change to the uh, so that uh, flashing speed which is one two hundredth of a second and then I'm going to turn on to T. When you press the button T so it goes to time mode in this what you what you are going to do is once uh, it basically opens uh, there is no shutter limit so once you press the camera start taking the exposure so it's taking the exposure right now and it will keep taking the exposure till I press it again so I could have, um, um, probably I'm going to take uh, one minute exposure, two minutes exposure, 10 minutes exposure, one hour exposure. So it will keep taking the exposure till I'm going to press it again. So I'm going to press it again, boom, it stops. And of course it's overexposedness because that's how it is. Okay, so that's T. So 
once the second option is B. B is for bulb mode. You're going to press. You're going to now. I kind of uh, usually we use bulb mode. It's like we keep pressing it, and camera taking the exposure. When once we are going to release, then it stops taking the exposure. So the only difference between this T and B is that in B you have to keep pressing the shutter release button and as long as you keep pressing the shutter release button the camera is going to take the exposure but once you switch to T it means that you have to press this button twice two times all right so that's the main difference then uh, that's four second two second one second and then the normal exposure that as you can see on the screen right now I have full one stop exposure and then lock again over this one third step so i usually put if i want to use this as a uh, as a normal camera normal day camera i keep this uh, shutter dial to one third step and i'm just rotating the dial taking my exposure just like normal camera okay now let's jump over the exposure composition now this is very interesting actually exposure composition for that i have to switch to aperture priority now this is the lever as you can see this is the lever by rotating this lever i can switch to manual mode aperture priority shutter priority program mode auto all right so let's go to aperture priority and there is a reason i'm, I'm telling you why i moved to aperture priority okay what's going to happen now uh, is that let me turn the screen like that so you can see uh, yeah okay let's put it over here so you can keep seeing this dial at that zero cover exposure compensation okay now that's better yep this dial at zero exposure compensation so look over here if I'm going to go minus one Oh, sorry. When they, this dial is basically in a uh, third of a step. So, in order to move from zero to minus one, I have to rotate it three times. So, like zero point three, zero point seven, minus one, minus one point two, minus one point seven, two. So, this is how it goes. Okay. So, look over here. So that's zero, which. Uh, okay, that's zero exposure composition. That's zero point three, as you can see over here. 0 0.7 that's minus 1 you can see over here it says minus minus 1 so the dial is at minus 1 exposure composition if I go to minus 2 it will go to minus 2 over here minus 2 is written over here and let's go minus 3 it will go to minus 3 but if I go to expose, let's say if I want to underexpose the shot by minus 4, let's say. And uh, I don't know. Because over here, the tile says uh, from 0, that's from 0 to minus 3 maximum. And from 0 to plus 3 exposure compensation. What if I want to overexpose by plus 4 stop? Or what if I want to underexpose the shot by minus 4? How am I going to do that? For that, you have to just lock it to C. Once you switch to C, then look over here. Now I'm going to use this back button, back, back command dial. And look over here. I can go with as minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 now I can go to minus 4 up to minus 5 minus 5 so now I'm rotating this dial and going to minus 5 or coming back to 0 that's plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 exposure compensation all by dialing this so that's uh, fully automated just like normal camera see i told you this camera is fully automated and yet manually controlled at the same time so it's it's up to you how to use it so 
if I put this dial on C, okay, so it means that I can use the camera just like the normal mirrorless and the normal DSLR exposure compensation will work exactly by just rotating the back command dial. All right, so that's how it is. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, how about, how about the ISO? Okay, I already showed you this lever. This lever is basically uh, moving this, uh, for moving, choosing the mode, manual mode, aperture priority, shutter priority, program mode, auto. Uh, now, this is the ISO. ISO is lock at uh, C. I will tell you what's the function of that C. Uh, basically, it's, again, all these dials are one third of a stop, so that's uh, 100 ISO, that's 200 ISO, 400 ISO, 800, 1600, 3200, 6400, 12800, 25600, 51200, and that's 64000 ISO. Okay, but how I'm going to see the performance, because right now the camera is an auto ISO, so the ISO is jumping as I move the camera. So let's go to the menu, turn off the auto ISO. Now you can see my auto, my ISO is 64,000. Okay, so I'm going to rotate the dial. That's uh, uh, 51,200. That's uh, 32, 25,600. That's 12,800. That's 6,400, 3,200. 1600, 800, 400, 200, and that's 100. So I am at 100 ISO. So what about this C? Once I switch to C, the camera is right now, because I'm on aperture priority, the camera is at base ISO. Until unless I go to the menu and I turn on the auto ISO, then camera will start going for uh, auto exposure like auto ISO but I am purposely doing it uh, off because I want to show you the feature of this C okay so what I am going to do the camera auto ISO feature is disabled and uh, dial is at C now look what happened I am going to move this dial uh, this dial to auto once I switch to fully auto the auto ISO kicks in, even though in the menu it's off. It's off. The auto ISO feature is off. Yet I can see the ISO is still changing over here. It's still changing. Why? Because I put this uh, ISO dial to C, and only auto ISO kicks in once I switch to fully auto. But once I going to switch back to any other mode, the auto ISO kick uh, turn off, uh, just like because it's already off in the menu. So if you want to operate this camera fully, everything automated, aperture, shutter speed, ISO, just put this dial to C and move this lever to auto. Once you do that, Put this lever to auto and this C over here, the camera will do everything for you. You don't have to worry about anything. Aperture, shutter, speed, ISO, everything camera will going to do for you. You have to just press the share and release button. That's all. So that's uh, the normal front dials as you can see. Uh, now I want to show you something really, really Cool. Wait a second. All right. I have to put this uh, landscape because I want to show you how the uh, you have to uh, s insert the memory cards. Now, the, of course, it's remember inserting a memory card looks. Uh, no rocket science but trust me in this camera it is a little bit tricky it's not that easy as it may look so let me show you 
Okay, so this is the, you know, where you going to put the battery and the memory card. Now, you can insert the SD card like that, like if this is a camera, you have to insert the battery card, uh, SD card like this, upside down. You can take the SD card without removing the battery easily, okay, and I'm going to put it over here. But in order to remove the micro SD card, you, you can't do that. You have to remove the battery first. And this is where the micro SD card is. So I hope you can see over here. It's right somewhere over here. You're going to use the edge of the nail in order to press it out and press it in. And you, then you're going to take out the micro SD card. So this is the micro SD okay the micro SD card go uh, upside down into the camera like this like this is the top of the this is the top of the camera I'm uh, sorry the top of the uh, micro SD so here, I hope you can see the slot yep this, this, this is the slot uh, the micro SD goes up over here the SD card goes down over here and both these two cards don't go like this. They both don't go like this. They go like this, upside down. So this goes like this into the camera and this goes like this into the camera. So let me show it to you. And you know, the, for the micro SD card, you have to remove the battery. There is no other way you can take it in or take it out. So micro SD card in. Now you have to take this. Then and then insert the battery. Voila, done. So that's how you basically put the micro SD camera in and out of this machine. The variable screen, this you can see it's there. Uh, display, display, okay. So this is the i menu. I configured it for for my uh, things. This is the menu button. Menu button. This is the zoom button plus minus, and this is the question button. You know, what happens is you go to the menu and you press this question button. Here, this is the menu. You press this uh, button. Wait. Uh, you press this question button. So uh, the definition of that menu comes. So in order to understand which uh, uh, menu does what, like you don't know the, about the video file size. So you press this question button and it will give you the definition of uh, what the, that particular menu is all about. So uh, use this uh, question button often. Whenever you're in the menu, you're not able to understand what the menu is all about okay this is you can scroll like high iso question button uh, reduce noise that tends to occur at iso sensitivity increases choose the amount of noise reduction that is performed so you can do the noise reduction inside the camera using this menu you can reduce the noise very high or you can turn off this feature so that's how uh, handful this question menu is the display is basically uh, uh, the display there's a display button it's basically just to uh, information on the screen high menu button is just for quick uh, custom buttons now there is one button I didn't let you know so far which is this This is the camera, uh, this is the black and white camera video. So once you switch to black and white, that's black and white, this is video, and this is camera. So once you switch to black and white, the camera will take, let me show you. Now I am in the menu, camera menu. Let me take out this, display, okay. As you can see, this is a color. This is the color photo. 
But once I switch to black and white, the display shows color information. But you have to take image, play it back, and it will show you the black and white. The camera is taking images in black and white. All right. But in the, over over the display, it shows color. So over the display, it shows color. But the camera is taking black and white HEF images, H E I F, as the extension of those that file HEF images. Uh, okay. So this is something that it should be displaying black and white. I don't know why. I will check why it's happening. It should shouldn't be showing color because if if I want to switch to black and white, it will take the images in black and white. That gives me that feeling that camera is taking black and white images. So this is the sensor, IP sensor, very sensitive. All right. This is the dial pad. You can configure and I menu. You know what? I what I did in the uh, shooting menu. Uh, in the shooting menu, I configured this movie record button for uh, starlight view. So once I press this, you see, and this, and I can do the image under expose. Well, let's see, the image is under expose right now. Okay, image is under expose, and I can see whatever the uh, XF I dialed. Okay, I am at one thirtieth of the second, as you can. Oh, sorry, one so one sixtieth of a second. F nine, and base ISO one hundred. So it gives me underexpose image, and if I'm going to take an image, okay, it will underexpose, which you can see it's underexposed image. So in order to see brightly in the EVF or in the camera LCD, I configured this uh, menu button for uh, this uh, starlight view. What it does once I'm going to press it, it gives me the brightest exposure I can get even though I'm going to press this shutter release button camera is still going to take under exposed image okay let's see still it took the under exposed image but the view that I get in the EVF or in the LCD screen is bright because of the feature that was first introduced into Nikon Z9 and Z8 now this feature is also in ZF so which is called starlight view starlight view gives you a bright view in the EVF in the dark scenario because uh, most of the LCD, uh, most of the mirrorless and DSLR, they, they show you under exposed, not in the DSLR, DSLR is OVF, but in the mirrorless, it shows you under exposed, so you don't know how the exposure is going to look like. Mm. So you, in order to see in the dark, you know, for a better composition, this starlight view is really handy. So I, I created a shortcut, I configured this movie button for a starlight view and it's really you know really helping me okay one more thing it's this front uh, front button this is the my uh, lens removing uh, you know this lens mount button so you just uh, press this and take off the lens which I don't want uh, this is the only uh, custom function button. The thing is, it's very my third finger always touch this button, and uh, this way uh, my the shortcut menu comes is all visible because it's keep pressing this button. This is something which I am not comfortable with, to be very honest. But because the reason for my finger touching this uh, all the time, uh, as you can see, I'm holding the camera. I'm holding the camera and my finger directly goes to this function button. The reason is because there is no extruding part over here, so it's not going out. So my finger is going flat. If it's going out with better grip, it's you know kind of a, uh, extended in this direction. So my finger would be bent, and uh, in this way, my finger doesn't go to this function button. But right now, it's going and because of this retro design so I can't help it I have to buy a grip for this camera which I will it's not available right now uh, one more thing 
and I configured this uh, auto exposure lock button this uh, for changing my metering so my camera right now over here is uh, uh, right now it's in matrix metering so once I'm going to press it turn into spot metering so look at look over here look over there and look at my thumb so right now it's matrix metering spot matrix spot matrix metering spot matrix spot so I created a shortcut for my ZF uh, and this way I can easily change the metering on the go uh, I press this so I created multiple shortcuts for ZF uh, this is for this button this button for changing the metering this button for uh, changing the star life and this button of course for my menu and now not to mention the i menu is also there so there are multiple ways to configure this camera for your daily use isn't it amazing that this is still a retro camera film style and still it has so many advanced features that you can go by the way there is one more feature which uh, i was blown away i was really blown away and it was uh, uh, for controls okay i'm sorry it's in control so in controls is this called f4 touch function so in the touch function what it uh, i enable it and once you enable it there are multiple ways you can use this back lcd to do certain things i use i'm using this back LCD to move my focus point in the EVF. So I'm going to, let's say if I'm going to put my eye on the viewfinder, let's say in the viewfinder, and uh, wait, okay. So I'm going to literally going to use the touch LCD screen. I can't show you over here because uh, uh, you have to, I have to film inside the EVF in order to show you how it goes once I put my eye onto the viewfinder or onto the EVF then at the same time I can use my thumb to rotate the focus point on the screen while looking into the EVF this is a very cool feature by the way this I can still configure okay, that can I use the full screen or can I use the half screen for moving the focus point into the EVF so it means that if I'm looking into the EVF and using my thumb to move the focus point and then click move the focus point and click so that's how the function works that touch function works and it's really really great uh, what else uh, this so, so far this is how the handling of this camera goes uh, there are a couple of uh, new feature in this uh, camera like the touch function I showed you uh, there is one more function I forget ah save zoom this is a function uh, that you can get for uh, the PZ lenses, in the PZ lenses, the the focal length changes inside the lenses. Okay, in the uh, this is there are new type of lenses, so there is internal zooming happening inside the lenses. So this feature is basically helping you to save those focal lengths last time that you shoot with. It helps in many cases. Uh, so that's it. That's all about the handling of this Nikon ZF. I hope you like this video and I'll see you guys in the future with some new content. Till then, take care.